friends i am dr amdekar and after listening to more than 75 symptom analysis over the last 9 months this is a series to recapture important messages and important facts that we should never forget and therefore we have titled this series as lest we forget and in this video i am going to address a very important point of history taking and i call it history is thought in action friends history is not his story history is not to note down what the patient talks about his symptoms but history goes much beyond that to understand the meaning that he wants to convey and friends the patient does not know what more details you are likely to get to know but you know them well and when you ask a leading questions the answers do come and you can almost recreate a script of the entire illness friends today we are going to address this very important issue the first prerequisite of a good history taking is a patient listening you just don't hear the patient but you listen which means every word that comes out of his mouth you try to capture the meaning of it to try to decipher what he wants to convey and try to think analytically what it means medically and unless you learn to do that you have not mastered the history taking skill which is so important i'll give you an example you start asking the name age and gender of the patient because there is a purpose behind every question that you ask you want to know his name so that you can address the patient by his name which encourages the connectivity or a bonding between the doctor and a patient and you are not addressing any tom dick and harry but you are addressing a name of the given patient and there is a feeling of being together <clears throat> age and gender of course leads to what may be the common illnesses or not so common at the particular age group or in a particular gender and then we are trained to ask for the chief complaint friends when there are more than one different symptoms you like to ask a patient which is the most serious symptom that he feels he is much bothered about and that is the chief complaint and that chief complaint when you hear you start thinking about that symptom you try to analyze that symptom and it's only with good analysis and a good thought process that you can ask a next relevant question to which the answer from the patient leads you further friends this is the whole important way of history taking that you formulate your flow of interaction your flow of conversation in a manner that each question has a relevance and the answer to which leads to your next question now imagine you had three young adults who came with a same triad of symptoms a fever abdominal pain and vomiting when you asked the first patient he said that abdominal pain is so severe he cannot even tolerate it but also he had a vomit or two and he had a mild fever his chief complaint was a severe intolerable abdominal pain of an acute onset with fever and vomiting you start wondering whether it could be an acute appendicitis or whether it could be the onset of an acute basilary dysentery or it could be an acute pancreatitis and now your questions which arise in your mind are related to this thought process so when you thought about appendicitis you would have asked how did the pain start did it start periumbilically was it dull did it shift over the next 24 hours to right eye fossa did it become very severe and localized at that time if the answer is yes you have almost diagnosed an acute appendicitis on the other hand if the patient says that he has a generalized abdominal pain but he suddenly gets a colicky pain and you have the basilar dysentery in your mind then you ask about the bowel movements 
and there is a blood and mucus you start getting a diagnosis of a basilar dysentery and if it is a severe unbearable epigastric pain then you wonder whether it's a gastritis or whether it's a pancreatitis and you ask the past history whether he had, had a burning pain retrosternal and if not is he bending down to protect his pain you have thought of pancreatitis friends asking only for chief complaint you don't stop there you give a thought process and ask a next question that is very important and that is what i call thought in action sometimes there are multiple symptoms but all of the same mild severity for example two patients presented with fever cold and cough in which case the appearance and the sequence of appearance and the progress of those symptoms gives you a clue the first patient started with high fever the next day he also had some running nose and sneezing and by next day he also started coughing badly and by the time it was day 2 day 3 his fever had started abating you know you have probably a viral respiratory infection and you ask whether there have been any other members in the family having a similar disease or in the epidemiology in our community whether such infections are raging very commonly today but on the other hand another patient of the same triad of symptoms says that he sneezes a lot and then he also has a nocturnal severe cough he also wheezes a little and he found that he, his body was a bit warm you are considering allergic process and your questions related to such a syndrome of cold cough and fever is whether there is any past history of atopy whether there is a personal history of eczema whether there is a family history of allergy friends hearing chief complaints or the sequence of symptoms and progress it does not end the history it starts setting up a thought process and those thought processes ask you a leading question the patient knows the answer but he does not come out with those answers by himself because he doesn't know the importance of telling such details to the doctor sometimes you don't have any clue at all with the chief complaints and any other sequence of event then you also about the past history and i recall a young adult who typically present with acute bacterial pneumonia with high fever mild breathlessness and mild cough confirmed by an x-ray but when you ask him about the past history of any similar disease or a past history of major disease he came out and said that he had two diseases major in the past one he had an acute glomerulonephritis and another time he had an immune mediated thrombocytopenic purpura knowing that he had two immunologically mediated disorder you start wondering whether what looks like a bacterial pneumonia is really an immune mediated pneumonia and therefore when you don't find an adequate response to your antibiotics nor the patient deteriorates you start wondering whether this is going to be a vaginal granulomatosis another similar patient who came with acute bacterial pneumonia and you ask him whether he has had a pneumonia in the past and he said yes he had not once but twice an episode of bacterial pneumonia and you ask him whether it was in the same lobe in the same site and if he says yes you have almost diagnosed a congenital malformation which is secondarily infected friends therefore always ask about the past history of major disease or a similar disease and once there was a child who was vomiting persistently there was no clue several tests were done but when you ask this mother of this child many more personal details we came to know that he was severely constipated he had a very severe loss of appetite anorexia and he was very irritable and he was passing lots of urine imagine a child who was vomiting and not retaining anything was having constipation and a polyuria a diagnosis of a renal tubular disorder was made and finally confirmed to be idiopathic hypercalcemia what a power of personal history similarly is a genetic history 
the dietetic history, the growth history, the developmental history and what not. Friends, I wanted to give you a message that history taking is a skill and you have to understand to learn that skill and the skill consists of deliberate questioning. The question depends on the answer that the patient gives and a thought process how you analyze that patient. If you learn this trick of a good history taking skill, you will know that you can create an entire script of this illness and scripting the illness is the best power that a good history can give you and once you have scripted the whole illness, you almost have made a provisional diagnosis. Friends, therefore, I call it history is thought in action. You think and act at the same time. You think and ask a question at the same time and in a good flow of such conversation will ultimately make you create an entire script of illness, the origin, the progress and the complications if any. I hope you take this message seriously and learn history taking skills. Thank you very much.